What kind of hair product do you use to keep your Sonic the Hedgehog do? Stop hating on Sonic for no reason! Seriously, what the frick, guys? I mean, seriously, I hate all you frickin' Sonic haters! I felt like I never did a proper Q&A after I hit 100,000 subscribers, and I haven't done a Q&A on my channel since I think I had been doing this around six months, and I'm a lot closer to the two-year mark now. So I thought it was probably time for me to do a Q&A here. A while back, I asked you guys for questions across social media, and I'm finally getting around to actually making this Q&A video, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Do you have any advice for atheists in the closet with religious family and friends? Yeah, like I always tell people, your main priority needs to be your safety. If you're in a situation where coming out would actually put you in, in danger emotionally, physically, mentally, however, I don't think that it's so important that you come out. Get to a place where you feel like you can actually be safe in all of those ways and then come out if you feel comfortable doing so. If you do decide to come out, definitely cater the way that you come out to each person based on how you think that it will, will go over the best. You don't want to come out to maybe your significant other the same way that you would want to come out to your parents or your best friend or your teacher or your boss or whoever. Also, emotionally prepare yourself for having a few of those people walk away and realize that if someone is actually prepared to walk away from you because you have a disagreement of belief, realize that person's not going to add a lot of value to your life. Definitely prepare for that to happen and understand that before you decide to tell anyone. Now, if you decide not to come out, that's totally fine. Uh, a few ways that I recommend keeping things kind of secret from people. If you're going to have uh, notes on your phone or a journal of any sort, get a an app that requires uh, password protection. I got that when I first became an atheist and no one knew yet. Also, if you join any groups online, like on Facebook, make sure that they're all closed groups so no one can see that you're in them. Uh, I also recommend that if you hang out with friends and family a lot and you're going to get notifications from those groups you don't want your family or your friends to know, then sign out of your social media when you're around them so that no notification can pop up and they just happen to see that, you know, it's uh, atheists of Minnesota or something. If you're going to be in the closet for a while, I absolutely implore you, make sure that you have some kind of community that you can actually be in contact with. It's difficult because you want to keep that all secret, but there are ways, like I've talked about, to make sure that things stay secretive. I recommend that you join Discord if you're not already on Discord because uh, it's really difficult to actually go in and see what someone's history and involvement is on Discord unless you're, you're really, really nosy. Uh, also, parents, just older people, tend not to be on Discord at all. So if you're like a teenager in the closet and you're on Discord and that's the main place you talk to people about what you believe, your parents are probably not going to figure that out unless they literally overhear you talking about things on Discord uh, when you're on voice chat or something. I have a Discord that I always point people to when they say that they're in the closet and they really need community. Uh, we try to be a very supportive community there. We're pretty heavily moderated to make sure that it stays that way. But if you're, if you're coming in because you need support and you just want to talk talk to people that are, that are like-minded without uh, being chastised, then my Discord is definitely the place for you. Uh, the link to my Discord is in the description. What are your thoughts on religious schools, especially in countries which have largely abandoned organized religion? I think education in general should come from a, a secular environment. I don't think that especially the state needs to be endorsing or funding any groups which are implementing this religious bias on, on education. There are still a good deal of secular countries that give government funding to religious schools, and I am in no way for that. Interestingly enough, though, places like the UK overall are much less religious than places like the US, and the UK tends to give a lot more funding to religious schools and, and teach religion in kind of public schools where the US has laws against that and, and doesn't do it quite as often, I don't think. Does kind of forcing religion on someone at a young age actually inoculate them against religion? I don't know. That seems that it, it could be the case in the UK. Uh, I'm really not sure all the factors involved in that, but in general, I am very much against giving any kind of funding to religious schools that is, is not private. Since coming out as an atheist in an incredibly religious community, I felt totally isolated and alone. Any tips on how to find or make non-religious friends? 
The way I did this was by joining groups on social media. Um, when I first became an atheist, there was an atheist group in the area of Texas that I was living in at the time. I started talking to people online. Eventually, I went and actually met most of them in person. Local groups like that are great, but I understand that not everybody has those in their area. You could always try to start one, but the easier step is really just to look for groups that aren't restricted based on uh, location. Once you interact with people online in a group enough, you start to recognize people, you start to make friends. Sometimes you end up being able to meet up with people even if they're not necessarily from your area. Another great way to make real life friends in the atheist community is to go to conferences. Now, a lot of conferences are a little bit more expensive and can be difficult to do that. I do know of a pretty affordable conference called Faithless Forum that's coming up in uh, on April 27th in Dallas, Texas. You can meet me, a bunch of other cool YouTubers there if you wanna go to that. You'll definitely make some friends that way. As I'm told, there are actually a lot of people who have made friends in my comment section, in my Discord, uh, in my Twitter feed, and the same goes for a ton of different creators. I know that a couple of family members that didn't know that the other was an, an atheist, or at least not a creationist, uh, found each other because they were both fans and patrons of Polygia's channel. So there are a lot of ways and a lot of places where you can make friends with like-minded people. Why is religious propaganda not being banned or deleted from YouTube? It doesn't fall under free speech as it describes teachings of religion and not personal views, and it's harmful content no matter how you look at it. Free speech definitely does protect the expression of religious ideas. That is kind of what the First Amendment in the U.S. seems to protect and, and seems to be why it was created to protect uh, freedom of speech for religious people and for non-religious people so that everyone can express their ideas openly and freely. Also, something being harmful to express does not mean that it's not covered under free speech. People can espouse bad ideas and that's completely allowed. Free speech is no perfect solution. It definitely allows people to espouse and share harmful ideas. But without free speech, we also can't uh, keep those bad ideas in check either. So if we're just talking about free speech here, I think that religious propaganda should be allowed to be put out there in the public. Uh, it's totally fine to me because I love scrutinizing it by exposing how bad their ideas are. Really, the only way to deal with someone's speech if you just don't like it and you think that it's harmful is to counter that speech with better speech and hope that more people will see your points rather than the points of the thing that you are combating. How important is it for atheists to read the scriptures of major world religions? While the term atheist doesn't imply that you are a person with this desire, if you want to be able to counter bad ideas, then yes, I think that you should be very aware of what bad ideas are out there propagating. The scriptures of various religions have really influenced society in nearly unimaginable and constant ways. I think that if anyone wants to be informed on the society they live in and on what ideas are best to espouse, then we should be familiar with those influences. Also, if you care about the truth about God and religion and all of that metaphysical stuff, then I think that you should be open-minded enough to actually read scriptures that a lot of people base their, their lives on. Now, it's not possible to study and understand every form of every religion in existence, but if you engage in a lot of debate surrounding religion or you generally say that you're you're not religious it it is wise to make sure that you're informed on what you're talking about whether you're saying that you lack belief in it or you disbelieve in it or whatever do you think religion ought to be forbidden to expose children to no, absolutely not. I think that children need to be taught what people believe around the world, what these different religious systems are, and, and how to think critically about them. Religion is in the business of forbidden knowledge, and that's one of the things that I am very much against, forbidden knowledge. I think that we should all be able to openly and honestly inquire about whatever we want. If we're forbidding children from openly inquiring about religion, then we're going to be crushing open inquiry in general, and probably stunting their intellectual growth. Of course, I don't think that religion should be forced on any child, but I think that all children should be given the opportunity to study religion in the same way that they're given the opportunity to study other languages or history or geography. I actually think that if children everywhere were allowed to honestly and openly inquire about whatever religion they wanted, 
we would end up having fewer religious people in the end. Not to mention that rates of religious tolerance would probably go way up. People wouldn't necessarily be bigoted against people of other religions because, you know, they actually understand what the other person believes and, and realize that it's a little bit more nuanced than that person is less human than me because they believe differently than I do. Why genetically modified skeptic and what are your hobbies? A lot of people ask me about the origin of my name, so I'll do my best here. I am the first in four generations of men in my family not to be evangelical, not to do some kind of mission work. People have always told me that evangelism is in my blood, it's in my genes, I'm destined to do it. But I obviously don't proselytize for any religion, so something in my genes must have changed to make me a skeptic and that gets you to genetically modified skeptic. Also, when I first started my channel, I kind of intended to, to mostly be an anti-alternative medicine uh, type channel. I wasn't really going to talk about atheism or religion that much, just, just sometimes. So the genetically modified part was just a joke about people thinking that anything that's genetically modified is automatically evil, so I thought it would be funny if these alternative medicine proponents got uh, response videos from someone that called themselves genetically modified skeptic. It meant that they were just evil and, and horrible, right? Yeah, I guess I, I wanted to be that. <laughs> I thought it was funny at the time, okay? You don't have to think it's funny. It's okay, it won't hurt my feelings. How can a belief be harmful? Has a belief ever jumped out of someone's head and shot someone? No, a belief has never done that, but a belief has motivated people to jump out and shoot other people. Beliefs underlie and motivate actions. Certain beliefs underlie and motivate harmful actions. So I would just go ahead and say that certain beliefs are harmful. That's how beliefs can be harmful. How do you combat guilting from your friends about your atheism? I have a good Catholic friend who is very dear to me, but is a little defensive whenever we talk about my being an atheist. Example, you're saying that my religion is a lie, or I'm really sad you're an atheist. This one's pretty simple. If someone will not resolve that they won't ever try to emotionally manipulate me into believing the way that they do, then I won't be friends with them. I had some people use little phrases like this here and there when I first came out, um, but I just kind of directly confronted nicely anybody who used these phrases. And luckily in my situation, everyone understood where I was coming from when I said, hey, that's, that's kind of manipulative, would you not do that? Now, if people got offended at that when I was trying to be polite as possible and said, oh no, I absolutely will not stop trying to guilt you into believing this because this is, you know, the, the divine commission or whatever, then I just wouldn't be friends with them anymore. Uh, sorry, but that's a relationship that will not be healthy and I don't wanna have it. This one's from my friend Dan. If Susie takes a train going 80 miles an hour eastward from Los Angeles to Chicago, and then takes another train from Chicago to New York going 60 miles an hour, how many hours would it take for Susie to get there? Well, Dan, I would actually recommend that Susie not take the train and just kind of hop on your shoulders because you could just take seven or eight steps and you'll be there. See, for those of you who haven't caught on, Dan is a, he's a pretty tall guy, like 6'5 or something, and I, I'm not a pretty tall guy. Um, so I like to make jokes about how tall he is and then explain them, making them not funny anymore. What's your view on reformists who pick and choose tenets to follow and discard? I'm not really of the view that religious reformists have to pick and choose uh, tenets to follow or discard. I think it has more to do with picking and choosing interpretation or being very flexible with interpretation in general. See, you could believe everything that you read in Genesis and not be a young earth creationist if you interpret Genesis in such a way that it is not entirely literal, is more metaphorical. I don't really consider that cherry picking. I mean, if you say that a book is entirely literal and you say that you should follow it literally, but then you start picking and choosing what is metaphorical and what's not, okay, that's cherry picking, but that's, that's not quite what I'm referring to here. I'm not saying that being a religious reformist and just interpreting things very flexibly to suit the way that you kind of want to believe or want others to believe is not a ticket to total uh, uh, irrationality. I would be a religious reformist if I didn't think that uh, religious reformists were irrational. But I don't think it's exactly accurate to say that they're just picking and choosing. When do you suppose, if ever, will pseudoscience lose its influence and appeal? What do you think needs to happen for people to trust the scientific consensus? 
I don't think that pseudoscience is ever going to lose all appeal and everyone will think more scientifically. It's kind of like, I think we can approximate perfection on that, but we'll never actually achieve it. And, and I'm okay with striving toward that. Pseudoscience often plays on cognitive heuristics that all human beings possess just because of our biology. For instance, people instinctively trust their personal experience, even though that's an unscientific way of understanding things and uh, coming to true beliefs. And so if pseudoscience relies on people using their personal experiences to justify their beliefs, then yeah, pseudoscience will, will always propagate. It wouldn't be until human beings actually evolved out of the possession of these cognitive heuristics that we would ever be able to be a more rational society. That being said, people who possess those heuristics can still be more rational than just never having done any work to avoid those heuristics at all. I, I think I'm evidence of that, so I'll still promote scientific skepticism. Still though, I think it's possible Possible for a lot of people to get past their cognitive heuristics and think more skeptically. Uh, I think I'm evidence that that can actually be achieved, so I'll still keep fighting for scientific skepticism and against pseudoscience. What kind of hair product do you use to keep your Sonic the Hedgehog do? I'm actually very flattered by this because uh, people on my Discord and I, we we actually say our praises to uh, the patron saint of virginity, Christian Sonic, each night before bed. And I, I feel like I just lost a, a lot of my viewers, but yes, that is an actual thing that we, uh, we talk about on my Discord. But to answer the question, I, I pretty much just uh, get out of the shower and make sure that my hair is still a little bit moist. Uh, I run my fingers through it and just think, gotta go fast and you know, it comes out this way like every time. How should we be interacting with those we encounter with anti-science and religiously motivated political views? As with any time you have a disagreement with someone, I think that the default position to take is one of politeness, of curiosity, and of genuine interest in exploring the truth. I recommend that people utilize street epistemology when they're talking about heavy topics like this uh, with people, especially if they're not necessarily very familiar uh, with the topic or they're not familiar with the person. Street epistemology is the way to go. Now, outside of one-on-one -on -one interactions, I don't think we have to be so controlled and conservative about the way that we express our views or, uh, or explore topics with people. But I think that we should always be aware of the fact that uh, we're all emotional creatures, and if we offend somebody in uh, the expression of our views can potentially turn them off. Uh, I'm not necessarily against offending someone, but just know your audience, know the people that you're talking to, know what's going to make them just put their fingers in their ears and not listen. Try to avoid that if you can. If you can't, uh, I guess it's a little bit more f fair game at that point. What are some, if any, moral slash ethical codes you live by? My friends Cosmic Skeptic and Rationality Rules have gotten pretty in-depth on this, so I thought it might be refreshing to put this relatively simply. I tend to live by the golden rule, I do unto others as I would have them do to me. I also try to experience as much enjoyment and well-being while I'm alive as possible, while always trying to help others do the same. I've heard you talk plenty about essential oils, but I wonder what your take is on vitamins and supplements, not just vitamin C and prenatal, but also St. John's wort and things of that nature. I'm not inherently against supplements or vitamins or anything like that. I am just for only utilizing uh, treatments of, of any kind, whether supplemental or primary, that have been evidentially proven to work. As far as I know, prenatal vitamins and uh, St. John's wort both have pretty uh, well-evidenced effects. And so using those, if you consult with someone who actually knows what they're talking about, like a doctor, like an actual doctor, not a naturopath, then yeah, I'm all for using those. I just never think that we should replace medicine with any kind of supplement. All right, that's everything I've got for you guys. Thank you to everyone who asked me questions. Sorry if I didn't get to your question. You're probably in the vast majority. I was only able to get to a few, unfortunately. But thank you guys for watching. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. Go ahead and subscribe. Check out my Patreon. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook at GM Skeptic. Join my Discord. And until next time, stay skeptical.